cool. I hope the sound is still good. I just plucked this out so you couldn't hear me getting coffee. Um, it's very sophisticated, having a small cup. I'll put it over here so I don't accidentally crash something. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about um, JavaScript file systems or how to write your own um, file systems in JavaScript. Uh, and I aim to make this a practical guide to it so you can go home and do it yourself because that's always good. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Matthias. I go by uh, Mathintosh uh, on the internet. If you want to connect to me, uh, hit me up on Twitter or GitHub. Uh, I usually respond pretty quickly. Uh, I work on this project called the Dead Data Project. It's an open source data sharing tool. Uh, basically, it just means that I get to work on open source all day, uh, which is pretty great. Um, writing all kinds of tools, including file systems. So, pretty happy about that. Check it out. It's on the internet also. So, yeah, uh, files are great. Uh, I love files. Uh, everybody who has a computer has probably interacted with files at some point, I hope. Uh, otherwise, it's probably an iPhone or something like that, which is pretty shitty in that regard. Um, but, yeah, uh, files are great because it's like a really, really low level abstraction that is um, very natural to us for some reason. Uh, it's not something we think about as a technical thing. It's just something we know, files. Um, and Unix, which we all kind of run if we have a, if we have a Mac uh, or a Linux machine, uh, has this really cool philosophy where everything is a file. And that's something that gets thrown around a lot if you've ever done computer science or read about Unix. It's probably usually one of the first statements people do uh, when they talk about Unix. And when I first read this, I didn't understand it. I just, I, I nodded. I was like, yeah, that's cool. I can see why that's awesome. But I had, I had no idea why, what it meant uh, until I started doing more fun stuff with computers. And I went into this magic folder on your computer. So you, you all have this if you're running Mac. Um, so if you go into slash dev and list, you have all these magic files. And one of these files is. Um, for example, called standard out. Um, and if you write to it, hello word, <laughs> it just writes to standard out. Uh, <laughs> uh, and there's also more cool stuff. For example, there's, uh, there's this thing called uh, random in here. And I don't know if you can guess what it does, but it just gives you random data. Um, and there's another one that's really awesome called um, null. And what it does is it does nothing. You can just write to it. And it just makes sure your files go nowhere, um, which is actually extremely useful. Uh, for example, for silencing a program, just redirect it to dev null, and it becomes silent. So everything is a file. That's awesome, right? Um, so that rocks. And it's awesome because of this reason. Um, file systems on an OS have a very, very simple API. Uh, there are very few things you can do with it. Basically, it boils down to this. You can read a file, um, and you can write a file, right? Super simple. Um, so when I did the the random thing, cat it random, I'm basically just opening a file called random and I'm calling, calling read on it a bunch of times. And my operating system just pretends that it's a file and just gives random data back. But the program calling it, in this case cat, doesn't know that it's a special thing. It's just using a file system API. On Unix, if you access a server online, it actually opens a socket, and it actually pretends that that socket is a file, so just using the regular file system calls on it, calling read on a socket to get data back. So it's actually the same kind of procedure as if you were dealing with um, normal files. So this, this is really cool because this allows us to have a very strict API uh, that a lot of uh, applications can, in, can uh, interact with. So that's super sweet. Uh, that's just one problem. File systems have to run in something called kernel space, um, kernel space is basically the hardest place on your computer to run a program. It's in the like 
very core of your computer where you need the super user uh, rights, and if you mess something up, your computer will probably not work anymore. Uh, so that kind of sucks. Um, luckily, someone uh, tried to fix this with something called Fuse. So I don't know if you ever read about Fuse or interacted with Fuse. Um, but Fuse is basically an open source project that's surprisingly old um, that lets you write a uh, file system in something called user space. And user space is the, is the place where we normally interact with programs. It's, it's, very, um, it's where you run your node programs. It's where you run your JavaScript things. And it works by some smart people implementing all the file system stuff in kernel space and being really, really careful not to fuck anything up. And then basically proxying that API to user space where they add a bunch of security checks to make sure that you're not going to mess something up. Uh, and it's very fun to inter interact with Fuse because the sandbox is not always uh, completely sandboxed. Uh, so once in a while when you mess something up, your computer will kernel panic. And uh, that's fun. So just the first rule of using Fuse is just don't make mistakes. <laughs> uh, so I used, to, there used, I used to use a module called um, Fuse for JS to interact with this. Uh, but the maintainer had only implemented around a third of, uh, two thirds of the API and stopped maintaining it and stopped accepting pull requests. So I got really annoyed by that. And one day I just sat down and rewrote everything. So I, I, um, I wrote these few bindings for Node that are called few bindings um, that are basically allows you to use views from Node, which basically means that you can write file systems in JavaScript, which is also the title of the talk. Um, so let's try to see how that looks, and hopefully we won't kernel panic my computer. Um, so the first thing you need to do is actually install something called MacFuse. I think it's actually called OSXFuse. It's very confusing. It's probably on my readme. So. OSX fuse. <clears throat> so if you're on OSX, you have to install this thing, which is like an app you can click through. Um, and it requires you to type in your password because it actually requires something to run in your kernel. So that's very scary. But um, just don't worry about it and install it. <laughs> um, but once you, once you do that, you can uh, start using uh, fuse bindings. So they're on NPM. So the only thing you need to do is, oh, I already have that folder. Cool. To npm install fuse bindings. And will, what it will do is <coughs> it'll download it, and it's a native module. It's actually written, uh, it's my first C project, project, just to make you even more scared of it. Uh, it's actually written in uh, C, like I said, uh, because fuse is a native API, so you have to bind against a C API to do it. Um, and it's, a, in, in, it's an extremely low level API. Um, so what you can do is, I have a JavaScript file here, and you can just require it, require fuse bindings. And then you can just uh, mount, and the only thing you need to pass in here is a folder, that's like a mount point, we call it, and then a bunch of JavaScript functions that represents file system calls similar to the ones that are in Unix. So this is where it becomes a little bit complicated, but it's all right. Uh, so there's this call called get attribute or get adder. Uh, the best thing about all the low-level file system calls in Unix is that they decided that it was really hard to type stuff, so they just this compressed all the file names, which means that we now have to look up the documentation every time we want to do something, which is extremely counterproductive because just call it freaking get attribute. But anyways, that's a whole different rant. Um, so. If you're looking up slash, which is the mount point, you want to say that it's a folder. We need to describe what we're doing here. So if you ever used a node, we need to return something similar to a, a stat object. And we need the first argument is an error code. This is a very low-level API. Uh, I apologize about that, but it has to be. So it has to have a file mode. And I can't remember the file mode for our directory, so I'm just going to cheat and do call stat on a folder and just copy paste this object 
and not worry about it. Oops. Oops. This is probably, who cares, that's fine. So the mode kind of just tells the file system what kind of file is this. So this is a directory mode uh, with some permissions. The user, 501, that's me. Uh, you all obviously knew that. Um, this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter. And a time is when what's this file system last um, accessed, we're just gonna say it's accessed now. M time is when was the file system last modified, just say now. And C time is when was the file system created, or this file created. Uh, and we probably need a size also because every file has a size and, and a directory is actually also a file. I'm just gonna put 100 here, doesn't really matter. Uh, return, and if you're looking up any other file, we're just gonna return an error code, enoint, which means uh, it's Unix for, there's no file here, eno entry. Again, compressed for your pleasure. Um, so this now means that we can uh, um, get the attribute of a file, but we need a little bit more for this to actually work. We need to have something called read here, which um, to return which files are in the directory. So I'm just gonna stop this out and say there are no files, it's just a root. Let's also print out that it's calling a read deer. And let's print out here that it's calling path just. You wanna be really debuggable in these kind of things because it's so hard to debug. Um, because like I said, you might crash your computer. And uh, we need to implement a call called open, which um, uh, is called when the file system wants to open. I think this is the syntax for it. We'll figure that out. Um, so mode is somebody asking for permissions, uh, for giving permissions on a file, and we just not say there's no files here. And the last one we have to implement is read, if somebody actually wants to read a file, although in our file system there are no files, so nobody will call this. But Oh, this is, uh, what's the syntax for this? Actually, this probably, we'll wait with that. Let's see if, let's see if this works. Cool, so what I can do now is I can create a folder called uh, mount, because I have coded that in here. And hopefully I can run my test. So just by running it immediately, because my terminal is kind of clever, uh, the files, my file system, uh, my terminal is trying to access a bunch of files in the file system. So I don't know why it does this, but it actually tries to access that emoji file uh, for some reason. And um, if I open my new terminal, I can go into, uh, <clears throat> into a mount and I can ls and there's nothing here. It's like the most expensive ls call ever. Uh, but you can actually see over here that it's actually calling this file system call uh, for us. And since I have some Git highlighting in my terminal, my terminal is also trying to see if this is a Git repository and all a bunch of things. So these are actually all being called from JavaScript. So let me try to convince you about that. So let's make this a bit more interesting. So <clears throat> inside this uh, file system, let's add a folder called uh, cool stuff. That's like the best file name ever. And let's just say if the path is slash, we should only return this one folder, otherwise just do like before, return nothing. And then we can just down here, when getting attributes, we can just say, also include uh, cool stuff. Cool. So let me try and run this. Oops. Oh, it's because I'm not unmounting. I'm just gonna do false true. Yeah. I've been doing this for a while. I know all the quirks. Um, so if I go into the folder now, I'll have a folder in here called cool stuff. And it's really awesome because if I go into that one, nothing will happen. Um, so again, not very interesting. But since this is JavaScript, we can make this file system do whatever we want. So Let's make this really annoying. 
and uh, just always return cool stuff as a folder. <laughs> and then down here, <clears throat> just always return that everything is a directory. So if I run that, I can go into my folder and I'll have cool stuff in here and I can go into cool stuff and I'll have more cool stuff and I can go in here and I'll have more cool stuff. Um, and you can actually see the calls over here just getting nested and nested and nested. Um, and uh, actually I want to just quickly try something. Let's say instead of doing cool stuff, let's do like an array of names instead like uh, fun things work and then just pick out a random one well this is a really long line so let's see if this works <laughs> why is it world in here now i messed something up i guess did I put a world in here? Ah, why did I put a world in there? I didn't. <laughs> I, I wanted to put work. <laughs> I'm just going to retry. I got confused. So, work. Okay, let's go in there. Oops. Oh, I can go into anything. <laughs> <laughs> more work. Cool stuff. More work. <laughs> At some point, I think this ran out of uh, buffer space. It's a pretty long uh, file system. So, yeah, and if I, if I ls, you can see once in a while it's a different file because it's a virtual file system. And, uh, yeah, and it's even not restricted to the... It's not restricted to the, to the terminal. I can go in my normal finder <laughs> and uh, do fun things. Yeah, <laughs> it's very happy to do work, I guess. My random generator is biased. Um, so that's all good. Um, so it's actually not that hard. I mean, you need to write 25 lines of really low-level JavaScript, and you really know, need to know how it works. But I mean, it's not that bad. Uh, so let's try to do something more interesting than um, just directories. Let's try to add a file in here. So add important.txt. And uh, let's put this one in here back, saying if it's the root, it's a directory. You actually have to put this in here, otherwise really bad things will happen. If the mount point is not a directory, your computer will just freeze um, for a while until it figures out that, you're, that it's virtual. Um, and if path is important.txt, let's just copy paste this thing. And let's say that it's a file instead. And I, again, I cannot remember how to do a file, so I'm just going to stat it. This is all a bit lo too low level once in a while, but it's fine. Cool. And let's just say that the size is zero because we're going to make this file virtual. And uh, we need to add this magic option called direct IO, which just disables any caching. Don't worry about that. It's a fuse thing. And otherwise here, oh yeah, also if you forget to call the callback, your system will just freeze. That's also a pretty cool feature. So just remember to call your callbacks. You get very good at remembering to call your callbacks when you do these kind of things. Um, cool. So, <clears throat> adding one file, portent.txt, uh, allowing the root to be listed, allowing this file to be listed. So if you run this, can now ls uh, the mount point. And if I try to cat this, uh, it won't work because we're returning inuend in our open call. So let's just, we have to return a file descriptor in here. If you know what a file descriptor is, it's basically just a number that's representing an open file. I'm just going to return 42. Um, so if I restart it, 
it will say, oh, sorry, callback. Error code 0, 42. It will say function not implemented because it's trying to read the file and we didn't implement read. So actually, the file system is pretty good at giving you advice of what you're doing wrong even though you're implementing a file system. Um, so let's add a read call. And read is cool because it has a crazy signature that I can't remember. But I have a cheat file here that I can just copy-paste. So it's a su super low-level thing that requires a path, a file descriptor, a buffer that you have to write to, the length of the buffer, and the position in the file. So what we can do in here, we can just do, we have to write to this buffer the thing we're trying to return. So I'm just going to write uh, buts to it and a new line. And then we have to call the callback with uh, how many bytes we've written. And there are six bytes in that string. So if I restart this now, I'll have a file in the, in the uh, file system that's called important. And if I cat that file, I'll just print out bots forever. Uh, so that's the basic introductions to file systems. And actually, I put that on NPM yesterday. It's called bots.fs if you, <laughs> you want to run it at home. So, um, I mean, so file systems are cool. And uh, believe it or not, you can actually make uh, non-joke file systems also. Um, and one of the reasons file systems are really cool is that you can take a really crazy abstraction, a really big abstraction, and by turning it into a file system, even though it's hard to write a file system, it makes the abstraction easier to maintain for everybody else besides you, because they're now just dealing with files. So. I talked to a front-end developer friend of mine, and uh, we had this idea that whenever you use front-end development, um, you always have to use all these crazy tools, like gulp, grunt, whatever. It's also, it's, it's leaking all over your application, which kind of tools you're using. Uh, but it's basically just about compiling, right? So what if you could make a file system that would just automatically compile stuff for you uh, when you read it, right? So think about, um, Browserify, that's, I'm a big fan of Browserify. Instead of having to run Browserify, what if you can just read a JS file and it would, the file system would automatically Browserify it for you? Um, this way, we could just um, run a static file server that would just serve files, and by reading a file, it would be Browserified, and the, files, the server wouldn't even need to know anything about Browserify, which is pretty awesome. Um, because that's also how we deploy things anyway, because we usually compile stuff before deploying, right? So uh, let's try to do that, because it's actually not that difficult. Believe it or not, you can easily turn this bots example into a browser FS. So what we need to do is we need to, we need to require uh, FS, because we're doing files, and we need to require child process dot exec, and uh, <clears throat> instead of returning this hardcoded file, let's just return all files in the current directory. Um, files, if error, I'm just going to return this a permission error. It doesn't really matter. Who cares? And we only want to deal with JavaScript files, so files equals files. This files will contain every file in the directory, so we need to filter it so it's only um, JS files because it's browser certified. So I'm going to show off my regex skills here. Uh, I had a catastrophic failure the other day, and some code I ran because I accidentally messed up a regex, so I'm a bit off my game. Uh, but hopefully this works. Um, let's just return the JavaScript files. And let's just only do this if it's the root. No magic, magic, uh, infinite file systems. Return. Otherwise, just return an, an empty file array. Um, 
cool. So if it's the root, just return the, uh, the um, folder thing. And if it's the JavaScript file, let's just add that regex here again. Just just re return this dummy object that it's the file. Otherwise, there are no files. OK. So this is where we might have a catastrophic failure. But I'll try it. So mounting the file system worked. If I list it, there'll be two files in here, right? But we didn't, <laughs> we didn't fix the, the bots thing. So like, it's still bots. Uh, so it's not really browserified yet. So what we can do is we can just in open, instead of just returning this dummy object, we can actually in here just read the, read the file. So this file will have a slash in front. So if you just remove that slash, it's going to be the same JavaScript file as in the other folder. So I'm just going to do slice one. That just removes the slash. And we get the buffer out here. So again, if there was an error, return cb uh, fuse eperm. Otherwise, let's save that buffer somewhere. So I have a module that allows you to just map something to a numeric index. It's called a numeric ID map, I think. I guess we'll find out. Um, so what you can do down here is you can just do var fd, because we need to return a number from this that's representing this file. I can do add this buffer. And this file descriptor, because my thing here always returns to the lowest possible number to, to ma uh, map something with, so it starts at 0, then 1, then 2. But if you've ever done any programming in C, you'll know that file descriptors 0, 1, and 2 are uh, standard in, standard out, and uh, standard error. So let's just add 5 to it, and that's probably fine. Probably nobody using that, that part. Um, and then when we are writing it out, we actually get passed in the file descriptor here, right? So what I can do is I can just get the buffer by doing IDs get FD minus 5, because I need to subtract that 5 again. And um, this is the entire file, so I'm just going to slice out the part I need by doing uh, slice position, because that's the position the file system is asking for. <clears throat> and then uh, if this is empty, return FD, uh, uh, return zero, because that's how you tell the file system there's no more data and it will stop reading. If this, um, <clears throat> otherwise copy this slice to the result buffer, and if our slice is bigger than the buffer, we've just filled out the buffer. So we just call CB buff length because we read the entire thing. Otherwise, uh, just call slice.length because we only read that small slice. OK, so let's try and run that and see what happens. So. I can still ls, hopefully. That still works. And if I cat a file in here, I get uh, <laughs> some crazy data out. So I probably made a mistake somewhere. Let's try to cat the other file. Whoa, yeah. So uh, let's see here. So because I made the first mistake of not printing out stuff, so you have no idea what's going on. Read path position. So like slice, and then let's print out the length, see what's up with that one. So let's see here. Oh, that should work. Uh, copy. <clears throat> Just going to print out the buffer here, see what's up with that one. Oops. Ah, oh, that's weird. Uh, 
Okay, that seems to be working fine. So I'm probably doing something stupid down here. Slice length. And I think it might be because I need to put that one in there. Or is it? Ah, oh, that's fine. Um, just to get down here. Here. Let's try that one. Otherwise, I have a backup of this file. It's fine. Oh, interesting. It does get down there. Um, let's just use the backup code because I don't want to. Probably made a typo in there. That's what happens when you do a file system. Um, so I'm just going to. This is some code I wrote earlier. Just going to paste that in. So it's actually doing the same thing where it's. Um, Slicing the file. Uh, if it's not there, just returning it. Otherwise, it's copying the result to the buffer and returning, returning the length. So let's try and run this instead. So now it works. So I probably had a typo in there. Don't worry about that. So, but it's kind of boring right now because it's actually just echoing the file out. Um, so when I cat the mounted template file, it's just this thing. Let's make a, an actual. Uh, Browser file. So just going to put console log in this file. Hello world. So if I cat that one out through Fuse, it's just hello world because we're just echoing files out now. So that's kind of boring. So instead, we need to browserify it, but it's actually surprisingly easy because instead of just reading the file here, we can just call exec browserify because I have it installed. Pass in the file name and uh, a callback. And oops, instead of just saving the contents of the file, I think this is standard out here and it's a string. So I probably need to convert that into a buffer. So call browserify with the file name, get the browserify result out, store that instead of the actual file content, and let's see what happens. So I need to restart. So now the file system is actually browserifying, which is super cool because now if I go in and change the file to, uh, let's just require this numeric ID thing because I think that works in the browser. And just saving it, I can just cat it from my terminal and it will be browserified. Um, and I can just print it out here. So um, let's just, I'm just going to pipe it to my clipboard. And then if I open Chrome and just go into the Google console, that's my favorite way of executing JavaScript these days, and just paste it, it'll print out that module. So I mean, the browserify clearly works. And it's all transparent. So if I just have a normal file HTTP server, just serving this uh, mount folder, you can just make a <coughs> index.html uh, file, and uh, you can just in here you can just let's do it down here. You can just make a normal script tag and point that to uh, your fuse mount, and then in here you can just uh, have a normal JavaScript file. I am in the browser. And then if I open this index.html file um, and open the console, oh, I'd open it in Safari. Dang. Just copy this into Chrome because I don't know how to use Safari. I guess it did not work. <laughs> Oh, it's because we're not setting the length of the file. Um, let's just quickly hack that together. I think if that's why uh, vc l because in the stat one, I in my stat call, I set the length to wait. It seems wrong. No. Oh. How do I make a vc print out the byte count? Is that oh, I like that? So, in the this is a bit haggish, but 
I'm setting the file size to zero. I'm just gonna set it to, you can like, you can probably imagine that you can do it in a better way than I used it there. So let's try it again, see if it works now. Oh, that's weird. I don't know why it didn't work. It usually works. Probably something weird. Oh, did I put a slash in there? Script slash what? I thought the browser was better than that. Wow, it's just because I suck at HTML. So <clears throat> if you notice here, this is just a static file. I have no build tools, I have no nothing. I just have a magic file system, right? So it's a very easy way to onboarding developers, assuming they have Fuse installed. Um, <laughs> but that's the one abstraction you need. Um, and it works on, you know, a guy actually made a pull request to make the fuse binding things work on uh, Windows, so that's really cool. So it actually works on uh, Mac. It would work on Mac, Windows, and uh, Linux. So unless you're running something like FreeD FreeBSD or something, you'll probably be fine. If you're running that, you can install your own build chain. Um, so this is actually a thing. Uh, it's not me who wrote it. Uh, it was my front-end friend. So apparently, even front-end people can write file systems now, so that's cool. It's called Fusil, uh, and it does uh, browserify webpack builds, and also does a bunch of CSS transformations and all kinds of things. So you can have a complete uh, front-end tool chain just as a file system, just as static files, so that's, that's super awesome. So <clears throat> I'll try to wrap this up here. So file systems, are cool because, like I said, they make abstractions easier, and they also, uh, I'm a big fan of distributed systems. They can also <laughs> make something uh, as advanced as a distributed distribute symbol extremely trivial to interact with um, because of this thing. Everybody uh, can figure out how to open a folder and uh, double-click a file if they want to interact with that file. And uh, if you think about it, there are things like Dropbox and Google Drive that everybody can use. It's one of those tools that everybody can use once you get it installed. Um, because again, you just have to double click something and you just have to drag and drop a, f a file into a folder to, um, to attack with it. Um, I'm gonna <clears throat> show a demo of this using a very old tool I built that you might have seen online, uh, but it's called um, Torrent Mount. And uh, what it does is it allows you to um, mount any torrent as a file system without downloading the entire thing. So the only thing you need to do is you need to call torrent mount and pass in a torrent. And then you can just open a normal file browser and it will create a folder like this one here that contains the content of a file. And like I said, it's extremely simple to interact with because I just need to double click this and open it in something like VLC to play it. Uh, so, I mean, if anybody can figure that out. That you don't even need to know that this is actually running by, uh, being run by a file system backed by BitTorrent that's syncing on demand from multiple peers. Um, so that's a really, really cool, really advanced thing about file systems. Um, and my final point is that yeah, it's called Torn Mount. You can get it. You can run it uh, if you want to. You can start on GitHub. I, we want 30 people in here to start it because then it, has, then it has a thousand stars, and then all my top five projects will have a thousand stars. So please do it. I'm very, I'm very like uh, vain like that. Uh, anyways, and this is a this is a really really cool thing about it. It's a 200 line JavaScript program. 200 lines to make a file system that uh, syncs uh, using BitTorrent on demand because um, it's written in JavaScript. And by writing things in JavaScript, we get NPM, so you can just install a bunch of things. And you can just learn to do that small glue to make things be exposed to the file system. And now anybody can figure out how to interact with your system. Uh, we just need to make the Fuse install process uh, faster. Uh, and by that, I'll finish my talk and say thank you.
I think we have like a couple of minutes for questions if uh, anybody has any, have any. If not, it's also fine. It's, uh, it's low level stuff. Um, sure. What is IDE stuff? Ah, so it's just a module I wrote to um, take an object in JavaScript and turn it into a numeric ID. So for example, um, I can show you here. Um, if you require it, you can uh, call add, and then you can just put in any object here. And uh, the ID you get back is guaranteed to be a slow as possible number that's free, kind of like a file descriptor. And if you add a new one, it'll just get a bigger ID back. And if you add one more, you'll get another ID back. And uh, then if you remove one again, so let's say I remove the one that was stored at one, I get the object back. Um, and then if I add another one again, hopefully it'll reuse that ID. So it's just a very simple way of mapping an object to a small ID, which is really useful if you map want to um, use something like a file descriptor or uh, in distributed systems that this ma makes the ID you need to send over a wire very small. Sure, cool. Anyone else? Awesome. So it's all on NPM. Uh, go write some file systems. Thank you.